Real JP Multimedia, proud sponsor of the Nerdball Podcast. Here to help you with all things audio, video, graphics, photo, web design. From weddings to real estate, commercial business to private use, we offer a big variety of services for almost any budget. And if we can't do it, we will find someone who can. Find us at realjp.com. That's R E E L J P.com. Real JP Multimedia. Hi, I'm Allison Reynolds Gogol, and this is the Nerd Ball Podcast. is the Nerdball Podcast with Lorenzo Melcher. There, you got it. See? <laughs> okay, Allison. A uh, little bit of a Allison start, but we got it, we got it going. We're all it was delayed. Right. No, we're, we're good. Uh, thank well, you for coming on the podcast. Thank you uh, for having me, Lorenzo. Yeah, you were, um, oops, you were very nervous about it, I feel like. Um, um, are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. I, don't, I feel like I'm not versed in podcasts. It's just a conversation. It's just talking. Okay. Yeah. And you do that every day. Talk. I do a little yeah. too much of that every day. Some would yeah. say. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. Um, well, the first thing I always ask my guests is what is something you've been nerding out about lately? A hobby you've been into, uh, particular movies, TV, books, something that you're really into. Uh, it just can't be anything to do with your job. It's just something that you do to get away from that. Um, and don't say your kids either, because I always get mad at Andrea for saying that that's her hobby. Cause it's not, <laughs> uh, you gotta have something, you gotta, even if it's something new, something you've been doing for forever, something you just started yesterday with something that you, that's really hobbyish. <laughs> I don't, oh, you may have invited the wrong person onto this show. <laughs> well, that's okay. This is just the first question. <laughs> okay, because I don't, I, 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 you don't do anything? stage of my life, I'm yeah. not a big hobby gal. I'm not yeah. a big hobby guy, Lorenzo. Well, you're you're into things. I mean, we were just talking about those books, right? Like, you I like mean, reading. It's all adolescent psych. psych. It's yeah. my jobby. Yeah, but yeah. Okay, no history and no adolescent psych. Would, would you find that, I mean, that's, your job isn't adolescent psych. It's to teach history, right? Yeah. So do you do this extra thing to help you be a better teacher? Yes. Adolescent psych is a big part of my job. Yeah. But it's, but it's not like um, in your job description, you have to do all these things. Well, in my job description, I got to teach extremely sensitive topics. Okay. To adolescents. Yeah. Do you, is that difficult to do? In this day and age, yes. Okay. I would say Mike Brown forward. I would Mike. say like, tw- now, see, so you didn't want to talk about work right away. And here we go. That's fine. This is how it works. Uh, I would say like 2014 forward. Okay. It, and how it, and how long have you been teaching? I've been teaching for 13 years. Okay. All right. 2009. Mm-hmm. So I'd say like my first six years were one gig. And then just societally, we came around a corner. Yeah. You know, of course, in the moment, you don't immediately know that we're coming around a corner. You can kind of feel like we're coming around a corner. Mm -hmm. I would say looking back. Yeah. These past uh, these past six or eight years. Maybe more like six years, these past six years have been more uh, just a different kind of ball game societally. Mm hmm. Uh, if I'm doing a good job with early American history, I'm constantly bringing modern context and I'm bringing my students experience in and, uh, and we're connecting it and we're Mm -hmm. looking at the lessons of the past and how they can, um, help us predict the future or help us make decisions in the present. Sure. And so a lot of that is to the psychology of the adolescent and, um, understanding how to, how to work with their, their brains cooked out brains yes (laughs) absolutely kooky little adolescent beautiful brains beautiful well we were all that right we are we're all our different kind of kook yeah Yeah. no i guess if you want to know outside of that stuff um 
I don't, I don't know. It's springtime. I'm planting stuff. Yeah, you don't you're want to garden. hear from me about that because you know who you are. Yeah, but you're that's this is who you are, though. That's I, yeah, I, I do enjoy I do enjoy when we go to your house. And uh, well, if, if people that don't know, you're you're uh, Andrea's one of Andrea's best friends. So we hang out uh, every once in a while. And I do enjoy going over there and and seeing your garden because the woman who um, had your house before had yeah. a pretty elaborate thing going on. Um, so it's yeah. cool to see all that stuff. It's cool to see it slowly devol- dissolving <laughs> over the years. <laughs> the previous owners, decades of hard work, it's slowly disappearing. We're just doing our best. Yeah. Well, you, um, you just, it's your house now. You decide. It is. Yeah. It is. Um, I'm just trying to think of anything not pertaining to my dad. I mean, I truly am, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a person who, uh, I truly am passionate about history. So a lot of what I do off the clock has to do with history too. Yeah. I always um, thought I was, I yeah. first went to school when I first went to school after college, I was going to, I wanted to be a history teacher. Oh, really? Uh, but then it just, I don't know, just didn't happen for me. I, well, I wasn't ready for school. I've talked about it a lot on this podcast, but I wasn't ready for school and, and it just didn't, didn't work out, but I still, I still enjoy that. Actually, I saw something in the news that Ohio is creating a thing where if you have a bachelor's degree, you can become a get a teacher certificate in a year. And I yeah. thought, oh man! And then I, and then I, I saw that they're a track and they didn't say bachelor's degree. So then I read it more. I'm like, ah, I only got an associate's degree. I'm like, so close. <laughs> and uh, the bummer about history right now is like, you know how everybody hears about the national teacher shortage, mm-hmm. substitute shortage, and teachers, and that 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 predates the pandemic even. Yeah. But of all of the academic content areas, social studies is a weirdo one. It's super oversaturated right now. So, oh, really? Yeah. So, um, like I, um, through BGSU in the state of Ohio, I take on, um, you know, I take on pre-service teachers, mm-hmm. students, student teachers, and yeah. teachers, kids who are working, college students who are working through their methods. And you kind of look at the people going into social studies and you're kind of like, um, you're great. And I hope you get a job, but Uh, it's that saturated, huh? It's that. Yeah. Um, you know, we're hiring at first school right now, just normal, you know, normal hiring. And literally every other department is like, well, we got three applications for the science position and Mm -hmm. oh, we got four for the math position and and then it's like, well, how are you guys doing in social studies? And I'm like, well, we got 25 applications. <laughs> um, we whittled it down to the top five. And now we're interviewing for those. So it is just like super oversaturated. But it means that you can get good talent and get, yeah, you know, top of the top of the crap. Why is that? Why do you think that is? Um, I have some theories. Yeah. But they... Are, are not necessarily comfortable for every audience member to maybe hear, but well, you you say what you want to say. I'm I'll open do it. for you know, I'm, I'm a brazen boo. I'm a yeah. brazen boo. <laughs> well, one theory that's out there is that you, this perception that like, well, anybody can teach social studies. Yeah, all that social studies really needs to be is a textbook and the teacher reading it. Yeah, um, and then there's this conception it could be a misconception it could be a biased view could be but it's it's i think it's fairly well discussed that um it's a common track for people who actually want to go want to be um athletic coaches at like a high school setting okay that a somewhat familiar track is like oh i'll be i'll be the i'll be the world hit i'll be the history teacher at the high school Mm -hmm. And I'll also be a coach. Yeah. I think that's attracted a lot of people. And I, not that that's necessarily a bad thing or a good thing at all, but, and another concept is just that people in the past, like five, 10 years, especially have seen how, you know, we kind of put social studies on a back burner 15, 20 years ago. We kind Mm -hmm. of, that's when like the STEM thing really started to um, brew and stew the STEM, you know, science and um, technology and engineering and mathematics and mm-hmm. America as a whole kind of said like, this is where the money is. This is where the good stuff is. We, our schools really need to be focused on math and engine and, you know, science. Um, and of course, reading's always been prioritized. You gotta know how to read. Yeah. Um, and then, so social studies kind of took a back seat and it's kind of a conversation there too. People are like, 
well, you know, now we have a lot of um, people might look at um, over the past five, 10 years, some, some societal issues that have cropped up. And that's a conversation too, is people are like, well, what about social studies education? Mm-hmm. You know, maybe, maybe this is maybe civics, maybe American government, maybe American history. Maybe we haven't been doing a good job over the past 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Do you feel, um, do you feel, or because of that reason, that last reason you said, do you feel like there's more pressure on you to be like, all right, well, we, I, as a history teacher, social studies, I have to do better. I have to make it so it's not on the back burner. 100%. Yeah. But it doesn't feel like I really have to put so much effort into it. I think maybe five years ago, I felt a little bit more that way. 10 years ago, maybe I felt that way. Um, But again, in the past, in the past several years here, it feels like uh, our society is just kind of coming around to this realization. Okay. Um, And, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll be teaching on just about anything, anything from Columbus sailed the ocean blue to, uh, the civil war is over and Lincoln signs off to end slavery. <clears throat> that's my, that's my specialty in America, okay. right there, early America. And nowadays it's like, I can literally be teaching about any little topic in between there in that 400 year span mm-hmm. and uh, 300 year span. And like my students will come in daily and they'll be like, oh, Miss Gogol, you just taught us about the one thing you just, we just did it, you know, last week. Yeah. And I just heard in the news that bippity boppity and boo just happened. And like, that's about that. So that thing is happening more and more often for me. And, um, it's good. It's really good stuff. But I think it's also just kind of happening societally that people are like, Oh my gosh. So the study of history is relevant. And you yeah. know, looking at the um, mistakes of the past, the successes of the past, the patterns and the repetitions of the past, that this is all really fruitful. <laughs> and like even a 13 year old can see it. So do, that kind of thing yeah. is happening more often. Do you uh, have a lesson? Like, let's say on a uh, whatever, on a Wednesday, you're like, okay, I'm going <laughs> to, this is what I'm supposed to teach. And then a kid will come in and say stuff like that. That's something that just happened. Do you then like, well, we should talk about this thing because they brought it up and, and something, you know, not, maybe not get to what you planned. That happens on occasion. Mm-hmm. I really believe though, in um, in uh, that a public school teacher who's paid for with taxpayer dollars, mm-hmm. I really believe in, in my, my sign and contract admission to adhere to those state standards. Um, I think I owe that to everybody. Um, I really believe that public schools belong to our community, that they Mm -hmm. don't belong to children and they don't belong to parents. They really belong to our whole society, to our community, to our neighborhood, Um, that it's it's uh, it's a function. It's a function for the perseverance of the whole shebang. Yeah. And um, and in doing in in believing that uh, I. I look to the community to say, what do you want me to teach? Mm -hmm. And I get that feedback through the Ohio state content standards. So for example, a good, very, very current, very recent example would be, um, I don't know if you heard in the past, like 36, 48 hours, the U S Supreme Supreme court. Court. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Their opinion was leaked on, um, Roe versus Wade, a, a state level abortion case. Yeah. And, um, and so, you know, so the kids came in with that, not yesterday, but today they came in with uh, questions about that. Yeah. And, um, I want to be that, that room, that classroom, that place where they feel like let's, um, let's, uh, let's find the path here. And, uh, if Google's got a little lantern, Oh, there's the path. Okay. She'll set us on our way. We can uh, look at resources then on our own. Mm-hmm. and digest the news on our own. Okay, Google, I'm having a hard time processing the news here. You know, maybe I'll offer them a link uh, to a news source that's kind of um, aged down to their- uh, Oh, yeah. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I'll kind of set them on their way and I'll do my best to connect it to state standards. So for example, we learned about the constitution in early American history. So they 
I teach my children about federalism Mm -hmm. and how federalism is just a layer cake of government. It just means you've got state government on top of you and then the federal government on top of that. So through that mechanism, then we can talk about the Supreme Court ruling Mm -hmm. and, um, and how it's, you know, just overriding state power or I'm sorry, it's underwriting state power. It's giving the power back to the states to decide on, uh, in this case, abortion. So anyway, that's what I try to do. I just, I try to really stick to the standards as best I can, but also uh, give the kids whatever they, they feel like they need. Yeah, well, you don't, want to, you don't want to be a classroom where a kid comes in with a question about anything and just be like, well, we're not talking about that. We're, we got to do what, what this, what's on the paper right now, you know? Yeah. Because it's a the, the constant line you walk, it's a yeah. Because line. then, because you want kids, just like I would, I I like when my football players know a lot about me, and you know they know about my brother and my mother and like all my life, so they can communicate that with me if they have issues. You know, I want yeah. them. I, I'm open, and they can be open, so that way your students know. Well, I can go with you know. I uh, there's this uh, about anything. There's the Roe versus Wade, or there's this new flavor of ice cream that I want to talk about. You know, whatever. You know, but yeah. they can go to you and say, like, she's going to she's going to give us something. You know, it might, yeah. she's not going to give us answers, but she's going to show us, like you said, show us the way to something. Yeah, you know, it. I'm sure just in coaching, it's very similar. You got to build rapport mm-hmm. and you got to walk that line between um, letting the kids know who you are, that you're a genuine person with a real background and a real personal interest in things. But that, you know, uh, also making it about the mission at hand, you know, yeah. Yeah. We're here to play a game. We're here to, you know, play ball or we're here to learn about uh I don't know. We're here to learn about General Tecumseh or Chief Tecumseh. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what are we doing? What are we learning? You tell me. We um, learn so, about the War of 1812 or whatever it might go. be. Yeah. So so you're you are I mean, I know you, you're super passionate about what you do, what you teach. Have you always wanted to be a teacher since you were little? Yes. Did you? So when, when do you, when do you remember the earliest, like I want to be a teacher? I have no earlier memory than my memories of wanting to be a teacher. (laughs) Actually I have one earlier memory. I have a memory of like, I must've been probably three or four years old, jealous, trying to climb onto my mother's lap as she breastfeed, as she breastfed my younger sister. Like I have this, or maybe it was a bottle. I can't remember, but my little baby sister is getting fed Mm -hmm. on my mother's lap. And I was like, you <laughs> that's my lap that's my mom. <laughs> i have that memory and then literally like my next earliest memory is uh lining up the stuffed animals and the mm. baby dolls or what was my favorite was getting the neighborhood kid getting the younger neighborhood kids to sit down and then yep. i would you know in school i would ask my teachers for the extra copies of the handouts oh okay i kind of feel like there was a fight sometimes and you <laughs> Because yeah, they like didn't other want to give girls, me other kids what? in the class wanted the extra copies too, so uh, they could be teaching. Okay. And I had it was like you know, they had to be divvied up. But I would bring home extra copies of worksheets, and then I would put them in front of like my younger sister and her friends, and be like, "You guys need to get your work done." And I'd play teacher. You know, Lillian does that, but she's the youngest she? one. In, she's the youngest one in the neighborhood, and she makes all the older kids sit down to do stuff. <laughs> she's set. She's ready to go. <laughs> yeah, I don't we'll know. If, I, I don't know if she's got it to, in her to be a teacher, but she's uh, she's got to do something. <laughs> she's going to be directing somebody. I just think it's funny that I'll go out there in a the winter sometimes or in the garage and, uh, you know, through COVID, they didn't come in the house. So there's there's just right. a classroom set up. I turn the heater on. There's a classroom set up <laughs> in the garage. So cute. But yeah, she she loved it. Um, so cute. so you know you start you started wanting to be a teacher when you were super young and yeah. carried that through. Is there is there somebody you remember? Because I I would talk to Mister English on here or Kevin. He always has to correct me. Um, and about like teachers that that really like oh this this teacher makes me want to be a teacher or teach this particular mm-hmm. subject. So is there somebody that you remember like oh this is perfect. All along the way. And yeah. these people know who they are already. Cause I mean, I've been on uh what was it? 101.5 was the first time I won a little teaching award. And it was oh like, yeah. That was like right when I started teaching. That was probably 12 years ago. And it was like, is all these things. Who's your what who showed you the way? Yeah. Um so this has been well discussed, <laughs> but I will say it again. Okay. I will say, I'll say it again and again and again because yeah. these people are amazing. And 
many of them are still teaching. Many of them still at Perrysburg schools. Uh, yeah. Kelly Treese, she knows it. Kelly Treese, uh, yeah, she was a fourth grade teacher when I was going through Perrysburg, and um, and now she's at the junior high. She's okay. at the junior high. Um, but yeah, Kelly Treese, and then there's some some classics. Marge Gallagher, <laughs> Marge Gallagher, all the way. Do you know who Marge is? I don't know. Was she, wait, what, what grade was she? Amazing. Though? Well, she was, when, when we came through, she was like sixth grade at Fort Meigs. Oh yeah. I didn't go but to Perrysburg till freshman year. So she just had, okay, that's right. She yeah. just had a very long career at Perrysburg schools and uh, she's still in Perrysburg. Um, and I believe she's in her nineties Wow. and she's like on social media. Yeah. And it's awesome to remain connected. But yeah, I'd say Marge Gallagher and Kelly Trees at the high school level. Um, I had I had Mr. Fer- one of mine was Mr. Ferguson, and he really like hey I, something about him. Um, he was so dry in his humor too, um, but it was I just really enjoyed his class. Good match for you. This is embarrassing because right now I'm blanking. That's okay. On the name. <laughs> It was a long time ago. <laughs> but this one, this 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 guy, he got a whole chunk of my heart and my soul, I think. Yeah. Why am I blanking on the name? Mathematics. Okay. What what grade level? Or what what class did you have before? I had him like almost every year because I failed algebra one. Okay. And I had to take it in summer school. And then I passed geometry with like not even trying. Like I didn't even, I don't even think. I hated, I hated math and geometry was easier for me. Yeah. 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 You and I might have similar brains. I like shapes. Like I could parallel park a bus. (laughs) That's what Andrea said. She said, you're so good at parallel parking. (laughs) I can do, I can maneuver. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) uh, But then numbers, I'm like. uh, Yeah. There was, uh, Mr. Harvey was a math teacher. Uh, Thompson. Mr. Tom- Thompson. Yeah. Mr. Thompson. It's yep. Thompson. What's his first name yeah. though? Rob. I don't know his first name. I, I, really? I don't know, but I had him too. I had him for algebra too. I had him like three times Did and you? he was incredible. He was, he was a very good baseball coach. I remember Kurt Wells and Adam Gump talking about him through baseball too, that he was a really good coach. And I think um, he's still at Perrysburg because I like shadowed for a day with Josh Spiegel um like a couple years right i think like the year before the pandemic and he was still there yeah and um he was so fun i could could cry i could cry i mean he would i would just do the thing where i would like get the homework done and then we'd go to take a a test and i my brain would just i would just blank out and be like what is plus yeah what (laughs) is root what is square root how do i square root what is divide my brain would just do that. And so he'd be like, you got to just come in early in the morning and stand at the board and, uh, you know, just in an empty classroom. And if you can like work out some of these equations on the board, uh, I'll, I'll help you out here. I'll, 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 de- I'll wheel and deal with you. Yeah. Yeah. But also, Dan, I thought, you know, Dan Thompson. Yeah. You, Sorry. what would you say? Dan Thompson. Dan. Thank yeah. You. Dan. <laughs> So, you know, it's like what you mentioned earlier about, um, you know, as a coach, you kind of, you know, you give the kids a little bit of your personal life. Mm -hmm. Um, He, we connected a lot because you know that my dad passed, Mm -hmm. uh, passed away, um, got, got sick my junior year and died that summer uh, before our senior year. And um, he uh, had told our, told, he made it known to us that his, dad passed away when he was that, about that age, I think 16. Yeah. And so, um, that was just another like added connectivity. It was yeah. just like, yeah, here's a guy who he's not faking anything. Mm-hmm. You know, he knows. Yeah. And um, all, all that personal yeah. stuff just goes, I mean, it can be, it's just one thing that he may say in passing or have said to every class, but you, you don't know, like what kid is going to get attracted to that or attached don't to know, that. Yeah, exactly. You don't know what any given kid is going to need and you might have the exact thing. Yeah. Uh, so I will not forget him yeah. anytime soon. I haven't, that's one I haven't really connected with though in adulthood. Um, but, um, 
He, I don't know. I, yeah. I, uh, Rob Gentry, Rob Gentry. Oh, and Deb of course. Drew. Yeah. They, yeah. I've connected with them. <laughs> they know how I feel. I get emotional. That's okay. That's okay. I don't know if I've ever had anybody cry on a podcast. So, oh, wow. Well. Yeah. <laughs> I've had some crazy stories, but yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm sure I knew. Um, I mean, obviously, I knew your, your father passed away. I didn't realize it was in high school, though. And I'm sure I was yeah. told at some point. Um, yeah. And we can talk, we don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. But um, yeah. being, uh, I've never had, like, besides my brother, who, I would say we weren't that close because, you know, he was in drugs and just running around doing whatever. Um, I never had anybody like really close pass away. And right now, like I think about it now, my grandma, my grandma's like, she broke her ankle a few weeks ago or about a month ago and she's back home, Mm -hmm. but she's so different now. She's so different. She sounds different. She's, she's super confused. So I'm like dreading her passing because that's somebody like really close to me but I'm older. I'm going to be, I'm 37 years old. So like, do you remember like just your, obviously the feelings of being sad, but like having to, having to deal with that at 16, 17 year old years old is terrifying to me. Yeah. It was not ideal. Yeah. I mean, how, how do you, how do you, how did you manage to be, you know, get through and, 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 go go to college and graduate like all that stuff like how did how did you manage that Mm, it was bad timing it was not ideal timing yeah sure there's a lot of a lot of stuff happening yeah there's a lot going on uh you know i don't know i think i had a little weekend job andrea will (laughs) andrea would remember vividly we both had little we both had our jobs side by side um she was that you know Heartland and I was at um, the French Quarter, mm-hmm. uh, working at the well, serving hot dogs first, uh, back by the pool, and then um, <laughs> and then doing guest services at the front desk. Mm-hmm. But um, that how I I I probably didn't go about my coping the right way. Well, the, know, I don't I, think there I don't think there's a right way. No there's way, a right way for yeah, you, no right? right? Way. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just I I remember my dad. Uh, I worked Friday and Saturday nights okay. through uh, 16 forward, 16 um, all the way through college. And then until I got my teaching job, I worked um, in hospitality there for at, at French Quarter, but then also mm-hmm. in Cleveland when I followed Jeff to Cleveland for a minute. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I remember my dad died on, I, I worked uh, Friday night, Saturday. Um, I got the call, like, this is it. This is the day he's, 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 we're losing him today. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I took off that, that day and, uh, he died on a Saturday and then, um, a Saturday in July. And then, uh, the next Friday I went back to work Yeah. and I did my little weekend job and I just, um, and for me, that was it. It was like, uh, uh, but maybe that's just my brain. You know, yeah. I just, um, I loved the people I work with. I am still really well connected with a few of them mm-hmm. and, um, you know, older, older people in my, in my life at the time who, uh, just, I felt really, uh, safe and comfortable with. And I just felt like, uh, might as well, might as well go to work. I'm happy at work. I loved my job then. Yeah. I loved my job. I loved the people I, similar to how I feel now. I just, um, I like excitedly go off to work and I know, you know, how privileged I am with that. And, um, but, uh, it's, uh, it's similar now. Like I, 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 I love to uh, go off and do a job that I love. And that helped me back then too. Well, yeah, well, I, I had, um, I mean, my job when I worked at UT, um, Mm -hmm. I had to work weekends and Saturday shift. It was just me and another girl, another woman, her name was Heather. And when you're with people so much at work, like, Mm -hmm. You, bare minimum for me is like, we're going to be coworkers, bare minimum, Yeah, you know, but most of the times, like they're my, like my friends, like my friend at works, I'll tell Andrew, my friend at work said this, or my friend at work did this or whatever. And, and, uh, and we like, it's the same thing. We, you become so close, especially when it was just us two on a Saturday, when we come in for, for breaks or for lunch or whatever. And we talk about a lot of stuff and, mm-hmm. 
And just, I'm, I'm assuming you went back to work because you, like you said, you felt safe and yeah. you could talk about it if you wanted to talk about it, or they were there for you to not talk about it. Yeah. And just to move, be, move it out of your brain, compartmentalize yeah. if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, there's something about sharing the trenches, you know, the people who you share the trenches with and um, yeah. yeah. So I always found comfort in that. And, you know, I remember the school year, so my senior year started and it was like, uh, I gotta go. We got, you know, I've got shows to be in and that's where, you know, Deb drew and Rob Gentry for me just, uh, and, and they were, they were not screwing around. You know, I was that year I did a lot of stage management, but also, mm -hmm. um, I, I had a, a role in one of the plays, but, um, you know, they were like, uh, Hey, there's a show to put on toots. You know, you gotta, uh, you gotta come with your a game or, uh, or you're going to be excused from these roles. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I understand I've had conversation with Rob Gentry and Deb Drew in the past couple years about this. And I understand that that can sound really harsh, but, um, it was life-saving for me because it was like, you've got the talent, you know, it was like, they were telling me, you've got the talent, you've got the ability um, we know you can do this. You can do this. And the fact that they held that bar high for me and um, expected me to clear it even on on some really bad nights, mm -hmm. you know, in my life. Uh, also gearing up my June, my whole junior year was the year that he was uh, dying. My dad was dying and there were um, a lot of really bad nights there too. And it was like, I gotta, I gotta go run this show. I gotta go do this thing. Um, so like I said, it probably wasn't ideal the way that I did it, but it worked for my brain and, um, you know, it just give the show must go on kind of mentality. Yeah. Uh, and, and I would imagine, I would imagine they, um, Rob Gentry and, and, and Miss Drew, or is that, um, yeah. that they wouldn't, they also wouldn't have said that if you, if they knew that you couldn't handle yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're professionals in their field and they they understood what I could and couldn't handle. And um, I'm I'm deeply grateful for that, uh, for the way for what they uh, did for me during those years. It was mm -hmm. tough. It was tough as hell. Sure. But, sure. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm glad uh, that I was into what I was into. I had a good little job and I yeah. had theater and, um, uh, you know, it was it was just enough to yeah. keep me float yeah and i i would i remember andrew would always talking about going to your work and just sitting there and talking to you and waiting for me to get it. off my shift yeah yep. she would get off before me every night uh i think she had to start like maybe a little bit before me maybe she went in i can't remember but yeah the way our shifts worked out so that she and and whoever else was along for the ride yeah they would come and sit and wait for me to get off work <laughs> I, so I think it's Lenzo, funny that's what everybody I, does everybody in my life yeah. they gotta sit and wait okay. i had to do that today <laughs> yeah you had to do that today that's a big uh, theme too that's I'm all right so grateful for all the people who sat and waited <laughs> <laughs> and who continue to do so i i i remember one time going with andrea and i don't know whose car it was or what but i remember i think you you had just like put desitin all over her car i think uh you desitin. or some uh do you know what do you remember what desitin is do you mean was it petroleum jelly i thought it was i thought it was uh diaper rash cream that's you, what i thought it was cream. Booty yeah. Cream. yeah but i i this car I because I remember she was upset because like this stuff's so oily I can't get it off and then I remember like going to she was doing like shaving cream on someone's car or something too like either it was oh, your car or somebody else's car or something we I did just... pull some shenanigans back and forth poor Andrea she got dragged <laughs> dragged and snagged yeah dragged and like, snagged I, uh, like, I, I don't know if yeah. she would have done that stuff I don't know if just on her own no, I don't think I would have done myself th that stuff if I was on my own. But we ran in some crazy circles. Sure. We had some stuff going on. Yeah, Glindy's wild. Yeah, it was all Glindy. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny Duhigg. Jenny Duhigg. <laughs> Aww. 
I remember hearing stories when you guys lived together. Andrew would tell me things about uh, because you live with Jenny, right? I did. Yeah, I remember that. And it's just some wild stuff that you would that she would tell me like, yeah, Allison told me that they did this or the dad or whatever. <laughs> is this going to make it into the cut of? Your yeah, podcast? this this is it. <laughs> I can't. I, we can't. You don't have to talk there. about it. I don't care. That's fine. I, I, I'm just I'm just letting you know that I just remember it did it. not end well. No, <laughs> that one did not end well. Well, we, we can, can trash talk, talk Lindy. We can go. <laughs> we can trash talk your about, best friend. You know, yeah. You know, the rowdy Mormon gal who <laughs> went off to OSU and in the time it took Andrea and I to get a four year degree, Glindy just went ahead and scooped up a master's as well. <laughs> Let's talk about that wing bat. Wing bat. <laughs> she, was, she was crazy. I think it's uh, I think it's really cool that. Well, first of all, it's very it's hard for my brain to imagine having uh, two two friends that andrea has uh two best friends i have a thousand friends actually in fact i'm going i'm going on a vacation with nine friends from high school i mean yeah (laughs) you know i but but for her like it's she makes it work and you guys you guys are perfect for each other and it's you know i love that you guys are neither one of us were big crowd yeah yeah it worked out well it worked out perfectly and i love when you guys are in a text chain and she's like, yeah, I was driving. I'm so behind on this text. Chain. Yeah. Usually I am the staple of a very long, like abusively long convo, but every now and then it's them and I'm the one who's behind. And then yeah. I have to catch up. Abusively but, long. <laughs> yeah. Usually that is me. I'm yeah. the person who will text. Send. The <laughs> yeah. Like four words. Send. Yeah. As they come, then yeah, that's me, and that makes it look longer than it really is. Yeah, yeah, but it's 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 really awesome. I'm glad she has you too, and uh, you guys need to go on a vacation to get together. She, uh, yeah. yeah, we need so to. My sister just zipped off to. Um, she just zip. Where's the? Uh, where's Disney Anaheim? Anaheim. Yeah, Disneyland. She, she lives there. Zipped, no, my sister. You know, Kathleen just yeah. zipped off. She lives here in Barrysburg. She just zipped off to California, like on a whim for four nights with her girlfriends. I'm like, geez, me and my friends had to like line up the stars and the moon and the sun to do two nights in St. Augustine. I think think you guys make it harder than it has to be because I just I just planned a vacation for nine guys. Well, I invite it was 13 people that were invited, but nine are going and uh, I was able to plan it. And I planned it a year in advance. So, you know, but, but I think you guys, uh, I think, I think there's too many cooks in the kitchen with that, some stuff that, that stuff sometimes where it's, or I, I, this is probably the the other option is nobody wants to make a decision. (laughs) So everyone's just like, yeah, this is all right. Uh, I don't know. Well, what, what do you want? You know, and everyone just goes in circles. Welcome to the highest mountain in my marriage right now. (laughs) It's the, nobody wants to make a decision mountain. Yeah. Daily, daily expeditions through the mountain andrea says she makes too many decisions during the day that she doesn't like to make them when she's home that might be it i love you see lead it to her leave it to her to clear the path of explanation that is exactly it yeah, yeah. she's she scaled that mountain a lot and yeah i yeah. don't want to make a decision i also don't want to see anyone between the ages of <laughs> one and 16 yeah for a full i need jeff knows this my husband knows this i i don't like when i get home i i need to not see youth for about <laughs> for it wasn't awesome. always this way it's, always, yeah. it's just, just the past few years i yeah. need like yeah. probably 30 minutes a buffer i i could be cooking i don't need to be still i don't need darkness i don't need quietness i just need zero children okay for about 30 minutes. I sure. so take the kids somewhere and I'll cook. Take the cooks the kids somewhere. I will go walk the dog. I will clean. I will do it. I just need no children for like 30 minutes. You know. So I, I think I, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, that's perfectly fine. I I think, you know, especially if you know with your husband with Jeff knowing that, like it's it's also good to, yeah. to verbalize that. Like this is what I need from you. 
Help uh, me make out. it happen for half an hour every day. Um, I think well, I'm going to lose it. Yeah. And I think um, I get that every day. I mean, I don't work with youth, but I get to be by myself. I get home about three and the kids get home about four. So every day okay. for an hour, you know, I, I do whatever, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm prepared, not preparing dinner, but re- figuring out what we're going to have or working out in the yard or doing something, but I'm like, but I'm by myself. And but Andrew doesn't always meditative. Do it's probably meditative for you. Very much. Like, cause I, cause I can, on my drive home, I'm like, well, what am I going to do today? Like I can decide these things that I don't have to worry about anybody else stepping on anybody's toes. And I always tell Andrew, like, do you can do these things too. Like say, Hey, I'm going to walk around the block for a little bit, or can you take the kids or do whatever, you know, and, take a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone needs a minute. I have a question about your trip and your nine guys. Where Are they all friends with one another? Yes. We're all, we're all, we all graduated was it sports? together. Was it high school? It was high school. Yep. Yep. Yeah. See, I don't, yeah. I don't have large numbers of friends that are all friends with one another. Got it. I think that's what, you know, especially sports. I think that might be a big, it's making me think of my brother right now who was a, you know, an athlete. Mm-hmm. He's got that thing. Um, I just feel like, like a, it, just being friends with everybody. Yeah. Or being friends with everybody. But even so, if you're just like the friends with everybody kind of got kind of gal or guy mm-hmm. or what have you, you know, people become different people when you grow up. Yeah. But to have a group of friends that was, that were all friends with one another, mm-hmm. that's probably the gold. That's probably the jackpot right there. Well, yeah, um, it's nice. And, and we kind of said it like, um okay i i talked i think i talked with like two other people when i was making a list of people on who 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 are we going to invite to this thing and and there is like a core middle group of people and then like one person is friends with three of from that group and one another person's friends with two from that group but we all know each other it's not like here's this stranger walking in you know but but i know some kids from playing football and i know some other kids from just hanging on the weekends. And I know these other kids because um, they did this one niche thing that I was into. Like it's, it's, but we all know each other, which that was the plan. Like, Hey, we're not, we're not having this vacation to meet new people. We're having this vacation to catch up. Uh, good old times. Of, yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that's what it's for. It's so good. Especially after this whole pandemic. Yeah. I'm sure that layer on top of it makes it even, will make it even better. Yeah, definitely. Just like reconnecting, getting back, mm-hmm. getting yeah. back with your crew. Yeah. Uh, well, here, I don't want to keep you longer. I know you have to uh, put your kids down. I, in fact, have to give tell my kids to get in the shower because Andrew's out of town. So I'm in charge. I didn't even know. Where yeah, is she, she right now? She, she went to little, Iowa for work. She's a little globe trotter. I know. I know. So. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on. I know we've talked several times, but it's cool to be able to talk to you one-on-one and, and hear some Thank things you. that I didn't know about. Um, and hopefully we can you can come back on again. I think there's a lot of stuff I'd like to talk about, more more yeah. schooling, more history stuff. That it's very interesting and I want to dive more into that kind of stuff. But okay. um, but yeah, we'll, we'll set it up again. But thanks. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Lorenzo. Thanks, everybody, for checking out this episode of the Nerdball Podcast. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you're hearing this on any of the podcatchers on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. We're kind of coming at you two times a week now, audio and video. Check us out on all the social medias. Just search the Nerdball Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. We're out there. Uh, Gmail is the Nerdball Podcast at gmail.com. If you want to shoot us an email, we'd be happy to get back to you. Thanks to Real JP Multimedia, Cuttlefish Graphics, Perrysburg Junior High STEM Lab, and Big Daddy Graphics for helping out the podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.